Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab, and we have an awesome video for you today because it is quite possibly the final processor launch of 2025, and it's a processor I have been looking forward to reviewing for at least the, the last year. I think even when we knew, uh, as soon as we knew that Zen 5 and Ryzen 9000 was on the horizon, and especially since Ryzen 9000 turned out to be a little bit disappointing, uh, not quite as disappointing as Intel's Core Ultra series though. So um, obviously in AMD's 3D Vcache processor that we've seen so far, the 9800X3D, absolutely killing, uh, decimating the competition. Even, even AMD's own Ryzen 9000 range of non-3D Vcache processors just decimated in terms of sales compared to the 9800X3D, which I think outsold all of the other Ryzen 9000 series CPUs combined, um, and certainly all of the Intel processors combined, I think I've seen both of those stats out there at some point. So it just goes to show that us enthusiasts, we, we are happy to spend top dollar if we can actually get something that is decent and performs well, and we've just not really seen that from recent processors. So the 9950X3D though, bit of a different kettle of fish. We've got double the cores and threads and much higher frequencies out of the box. 16 cores, 32 threads. So this isn't just a gaming processor. In fact, I probably wouldn't suggest you go for this purely for uh, gaming performance. You need to be going at it with the content creation and multi-threaded workloads as well. Obviously we do have a much higher frequency here, 5.7 gigahertz peak boost versus 5.2 with a 9800X3D. So there's the potential for a bit of uplift in games there as well, just based on the frequency. There is more cache as well, but no more 3DV cache. There's still just the same 64 megabytes of 3D vCache. Now, something obviously with the uh, latest generation of 3D vCache processors is that the vCache is now flipped. It is underneath the CCD or one of the CCDs on this processor underneath the cores, which means that the cores now have direct contact with the heat spreader above, and that means that they can be cooled more effectively and they can run at higher frequencies. So that wasn't the case with the 7950X3D. We saw a bit of a climb down with that one compared to the 7950X, the non-3D vCache model. And obviously going all the way back to the first iteration of 3D vCache, the 5800X3D, that was really slow compared to its equivalent eight core processor um, in content creation because it had to have such a catastrophic climb down because it got so hot. So. That's not what we're seeing here. And uh, there's a bit of a difference between this one and the 9800X3D because that was comparing against a bit of a gimped 9800X, uh, the eight core processor, which had a, uh, a very constrained TDP. Obviously that was completely unconstrained with the 9800X3D, which proved to be much faster than, that, uh, than the, 90, the 9700X across the board. That's probably not gonna happen here because we're looking at much more sort of level pegging with the 9950X. So it probably won't perform that much faster than that processor outside of games, but obviously you have that addition of 3D vCache. If you need a processor that is gonna be awesome at everything, this is probably the processor that everybody is gonna want until we have something else um, that's worthy of our cut, uh, worthy of our cash, which is probably not gonna arrive in 2025 at least. So. Uh, this is probably where my money goes. Um, we'll see in the benchmarks as to how it actually does, but we're gonna be comparing it against quite a few other processors. So we'll obviously have to compare it against the Core i9-14900K because that's still a monster, albeit it's got catastrophically high power consumption. It's a dead end socket now. We've already got another generation of Intel processors, but those obviously haven't performed that great. Very inconsistent performance and still offering gaming performance that is just well below where we expect it to be and obviously slower than the previous generation in a lot of games as well. So that's not really what we want to see, but we're throwing in the core Ultra 9285K anyway. 7950X3D as well as the 9950X to see how this thing compares in content creation performance and gaming performance. So $700, um, other specifications, that we have going are, let me just bring up my uh, spreadsheet here so I can actually have a look and uh, reel off some numbers for you. So 144 megabytes of total cache and 64 megabytes of that is 3D vCache. Uh, that compares to 104 megabytes total cache with the 9800X3D, but as I mentioned earlier, it has the same amount of 3D vCache at 64 megabytes. Now I spoke briefly about the frequencies. Uh, we've got a peak boost frequency of 5.7 gigahertz with the 9950X3D. So that's the uh, peak boost on um, uh, on like a single core or something like that. It's not the all core boost. The 9800X3D is 500 megahertz slower, however, at a peak boost of 5.2 gigahertz. Now 
That processor, obviously you can overclock it, so it can perform um, a little bit better than it does at stock speed. And uh, you can do curve optimizer, curve shaper, precision boost overdrive options, those kind of things. Now, um, obviously other options we have are the Ryzen 9 9950X. And as I mentioned earlier, pretty much everything is the same here. We've got the same TDP of 170 watts. Um, the cache is obviously lacking the 3DV cache, but otherwise it's the same. And uh, we have the same peak boost frequency as well at 5.7 gigahertz. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is a $700 processor, so it is not cheap. But if you want the best of both worlds, and it's certainly shaping up to be like that, um, this is possibly the processor for you. So let's crack on with the rest of the, uh, the review. But first of all, I'd like to thank AMD for sending over the 90, uh, 9950 X3D. Always appreciate having your support. And also for you guys, it would really help if you could like and comment on my channel. It just helps punch me through the algorithm and gets me noticed. And also don't forget to subscribe my channel. It means a lot to have your support and don't forget to turn on those notifications so you can be notified of future videos. And I will be doing a video very, very soon to look at what the best cooler is for this process. So we did a very similar one for the 9800X3D and that proved to be, to be very, very popular recently. So check it out in the description down below or in my other videos because I wanna find the sweet spot for this processor. Do you, need to, do you need to go for liquid cooling or can a half decent air cooler cut it with this processor? We'll have to wait and see in that future video. So don't forget to turn on those notifications so you are notified. Thanks to you guys for watching again. Let's crack on with the review. First up is a little bit about my test system, which includes all the latest Windows 11 drivers and updates. We also use an RTX 4090, along with 32 gigabytes of DDR6000 memory. The same goes for the Intel Core i9 14900K system, but for the Core Ultra 9 285K system, we used 48 gigabytes of DDR5 8200 queued in memory. The processor is also liquid cooled to remove any thermal bottlenecks. Okay, so moving on to our benchmarks then and starting with some game tests and we have Assassin's Creed Mirage here, the Ryzen 9 9950X3D all the way at the top. A little bit of an uplift over the 9800X3D and the Ryzen 9 9950X3D doing pretty well here as well. This game does like 3DV cache, it also likes lots of cores which is why the 9800X3D is a little bit slower in this game. So it's another win for the 3D vCache processors here then, very little between them at the top. The Core i9-4900K being the next runner-up in terms of 1% lows, although a slightly lower average frame rate than the 9950X. And uh, all the way at the bottom there, the Core Ultra 9 285K, slightly higher average than the 14900K and uh, 182 on the 1% lows. But again, it's a win for the 3D vCache processors. Our next game test is Cyberpunk, and here we have another win for the 3D vCache processors way out in front, and it's a very close battle at the top between the 9950X3D and the 9800X3D. And uh, moving further down the graph, it does seem like Intel has made some improvements here with the Core Ultra 9 285K, which now stands above the Core i9 14900K, but sadly it's not the same everywhere, while the 9950X manages a decent showing in the middle. Next up we have Flight Simulator and this is the previous version, 2022. I haven't made the move to the latest version yet just because it's been quite buggy and inconsistent from launch and uh, hopefully that situation will improve. But here the 9950X3D out in front again um, ahead of the 9800X3D and uh, 7950X3D by quite a margin on that one. And dipping down the graph the Core i9-14900K again outstripping the Ultra 9 285K and the 9950X comes in last. Moving on to handbrake now then, and both 16-core Zen 5 processors manage excellent results here, and it's only the Core Ultra 9 285K that manages to split them, so it's uh, at least one test that Intel does well in with this processor. And uh, even more impressive though, the 9950X3D outstripping the Core i9-14900K by quite a wide margin as well. Moving on to the Puget Systems results now then, and first up we have DaVinci Resolve and the 9950X, 14900K and 9950X3D all within a couple of hundred points of each other at the top. Next up we have the 9800X3D in fourth place and uh, tipping down to the older architecture, Ryzen 9 7950X3D and uh, unfortunately for Intel it doesn't do too well in this test with its latest architecture, the Core Ultra 9 285K sitting at the bottom of the graph. 
Next up, we have the Photoshop benchmark, and it's a win for all of the Zen 5 processors here, doing very, very well in this test at least. And the Ryzen 9 9950X3D sitting at the top, but just a few points ahead of the 9950X. The Ryzen 7 9800X3D also doing pretty well in this test. And it has to be said that 3D Vcache does seem to benefit uh, photo editing applications like Photoshop. Uh, we then have the Ryzen 9 7950X3D, um, older architecture there, and uh, then we have the two Intel CPUs sitting at the bottom of the graph. Moving on to Adobe Premiere Pro, and here we have probably the biggest difference between the 9950X3D and the 1950X. Uh, the latter managing uh, about a thousand points more in the uh, benchmark, but still the 9950X3D sitting in a strong second place ahead of the 7950 X3D, and uh, then we have the 4900K in fourth place, uh, the 9800X3D um, second from bottom, and poor Intel with the Core Ultra 9 285K in dead last. Next up is the UL Procyon combined Lightroom and Photoshop benchmark. Here, the 9950X 3D just about manages to pull ahead of the 9950X. And uh, in the middle of the graph are the two Intel CPUs, the 4900K doing better than the 285K again. And then we have the Ryzen 9 7950X 3D with its older architecture. And with fewer cores, we have the 9800X 3D. So next up we have the old faithful Cinebench and this is the R24 version and uh, the single core performance pretty good for the 9950X3D, one point ahead of the 9950X but that's probably within the margin of error. Um, Intel doing pretty well here with the core Ultra 9 285K so it's just optimizations and consistency that that processor is lacking. Um, the underlying results in Cinebench at least do show it to be a, a pretty fast processor and uh, the multi-core score seems to agree with that because again the Core Ultra 9 285K managing the fastest multi-core score here again at the 9950X3D managing to outstrip the 9950X by about 100 points and uh, the 14900K that old powerhouse um, just not able to keep pace with the two uh, Zen 5 16 core CPUs anymore uh, the 7950X3D uh, X3D not doing too badly and uh, obviously the 9800X3D a good indicator here that, yeah, you get the 3D vCache, but that's the penalty of just having eight cores versus 16. Next up, we have the power consumption numbers, and here the higher TDP of the 9950X3D sees it draw around 80 watts more than the 7950. X3D. So the 7950X3D actually drawing a similar amount to the 9800X3D, uh, despite the latter having half the cores and threads, but that's just what the uh, the second round of 3D vCache allows to, for AMD to push those power envelopes without overheating the processor. The 9950X3D uh, pretty much level with the 285K and the 9950X in, uh, in power consumption. 9950X just a little bit ahead and uh, the Core Ultra 9 285K obviously drawing slightly more power. So in terms of performance, overall, a lot less efficient in terms of how much performance you're actually getting per watt. And obviously the Core i9 4900K, yep, you might still consider it in some situations, especially if you're still on that LG8 1700 platform and you could upgrade to it, but you are going to be paying a heavy penalty in extra power consumption. So what do we make of the AMD Ryzen 9 9950X3D then? Well, I think this thing does exactly what we thought it was gonna do. It absolutely bosses games and matches or betters the 9800X3D and obviously doing miles better in content creation thanks to the fact that it has double the cores and threads. And where it's tussling with other processors at the top of the graphs, those processors usually have some significant shortcomings elsewhere, whether it's in content creation or power consumption or gaming performance. And when it comes to the Ryzen 7000 series, uh, this thing has a pretty decent uplift as well, whether you're comparing it to the 7950X in games or the 7950X3D in content creation. The fact that we have that flipped vCache, which means that the cores are now in direct contact with the heat spreader is really paying dividends because this thing is just right up there with the best processors, whether it's in gaming or content creation, and no other CPU comes close to matching its all-round performance. So if you can work this $700 processor into your budget, um, I would say definitely go for it, and uh, it will stand you in very, very good stead for the next few years, at least until AMD ditches socket AM5 and moves on to something else. Um, this is the processor that I want 
in my PC, basically, and I do not say that lightly, and I do not say that often at all. So when it comes to com uh, considering other processors, obviously the 9800X3D is the one that you wanna go for if you're just looking for a gaming system. That is much, much better value. Also worth considering will be the 9900X3D, uh, which is gonna retail for a little bit less. So you might wanna consider that if you just want a little bit extra uh, multi-threaded performance with 12 cores and 24 threads. But if you have the budget and you can fit it in, then definitely go for the Ryzen 9 9950X3D. And I should note that, or make a note for AMD and Intel here, that this is the kind of innovation that we want. We don't want the, dis the disappointment that we had uh, uh, over the last few months of dealing with the Ryzen 9000 series, which was pretty disappointing overall, and especially with Intel's core Ultra uh, ultra series processors, just how disappointing they were, and actually a regress in gaming performance. You know, we, we never want to see that. We want to see increases, um, at least uh, an increases. You know, we, we don't want to see performance going backwards. And this is the kind of innovation that we want to see. This is what gets us excited. This is what gets us building PCs and upgrading and spending our money. Um, so yeah, well done to AMD, and hopefully this will sell. Um, in nearly as big numbers. Obviously, I'm not expecting it to beat the 9800X3D there because that's a lot cheaper, but I'm sure this thing will sell like hotcakes to the people that are right up there in terms of budgets and performance and all of that, all of that kind of stuff. So again, well done to AMD. And also thanks to AMD for sending it over for me to look at here on the channel here today. And uh, don't forget to like and comment on this video. It means a lot to have your support. As I mentioned earlier, it just helps punch me through the algorithm and gets me noticed. And don't forget to turn on notifications if you do subscribe because I've got a video coming up very, very soon which looks at the best processor cooler for the, 90, uh, the 9950X3D and where the sweet spot is. Do you need to go for liquid cooling or would a half decent air cooler cope with this, potentially saving you a lot of cash as well? So don't forget to check out that video which is coming very, very soon on the channel. So. Thanks for watching today. Thanks again to AMD and I'll be back very soon.